I'm uh, Callie and Sisk. I'm the chief of the Winnemum Wintu tribe of the McLeod River. We've been here forever and ever, and uh, we have survived the uh, Shasta Dam. We have also survived the um, blockage of our salmon. And now that uh, there's an opportunity to bring the salmon back, we would like to be involved with that operation. And so far, uh, we've been knocking on the door at NOAA and also at the uh, Bureau of Reclamation in an effort to have a seat at the table to discuss some very important ideas that we have and opportunities that we have as tribal people and that have a traditional knowledge of our salmon in these rivers. One thing that we know is that they are natural. These are natural fish to these rivers and they know what to do. So if we let them, they will do what they need to do without us in the way. What we need to do is design a fish passage, which is totally possible, uh, without trucking them every year and it's spending a million dollars every year uh, in a ridiculous program that doesn't work. I mean, that's why we're discussing this now, is that hatcheries are not doing the job that they had uh, thought that it would do. And having these two projects separated, the Shasta Dam Rays and the Fish Passage is almost incongruent and is a little bit in conflict of interest of both projects. What we're proposing is, is that back in um, 1872, they created the first fish hatchery on the McLeod River on the West Coast. And during that time, they started to catch up with the knowledge that the Winnemum people already had about the salmon. And in that uh, big idea at that particular time, they sent salmon around the world from the McLeod River's fish hatchery because there was a decline of salmon in other parts of the United States. But they also sent them to New Zealand. And in New Zealand, the conditions were pretty much the same as the McLeod River and they are thriving there. What we would like to do is bring back those salmon, which we have an agreement with the Maori uh, tribal people there, as the broodstock for the McLeod River and replant them rather than taking uh, the hatchery salmon in the Sacramento River that, that do have diseases. Because these salmon in New Zealand are disease free and they are the DNA from the McLeod River, the upper river. And there is a, a viable fish passage from the Shasta Lake that would be viable to come down uh, Dry Creek into uh, Little Cow Creek and into the Sacramento River without costing what they're talking about now. And we have to have a, a, a viable population that has the memory to re-inhabit the high country. And the fish in New Zealand are those fish. And so now uh, we are trying to get at the table and um, <laughs> it's been rather difficult, but we're the, we're the uh, senior water right holders. We're the ones who have suffered the loss of the salmon the most. We're the ones that uh, don't benefit economically even if they come back. But traditionally and spiritually and culturally, we gain what we have lost. The fish are climate changers. They're the ones who clean the river. They're the ones who bring the nutrients up from the ocean. And they're the ones who take it back out to the ocean. And these are the scientific parts that are missing from the studies on how do we fix fish that are like thousands and millions of dollars. And we're thinking, it's like, you know what, if you let that salmon go in those tributaries, they're gonna find what they need to eat, they're gonna go and they're gonna grow up and they're gonna do what they're supposed to do because the Creator made them that way. This country up here needs the wild Chinook salmon back. If the soils are gonna get better, the trees are gonna get better, the grasses are gonna get better, 
the tributaries are going to get better, it's because those fish need to come back. And we need to bring the best broodstock back to the high country. And that broodstock is the ones that are in New Zealand, and now we have an obligation to help return that salmon to the very people who it was taken from. No one asked us about these things before, but now we're trying to have a voice. There are many governmental departments like NOAA and Fish and Wildlife and the Bureau of Reclamation that are setting up all these separate projects when the Shasta Dam should be calculating in its project a fish way, a fish passageway. PG&E should be calculating in its project a fish passageway and not passing that on to the um, public. That's their responsibilities for blocking those passages in the first place with this idea that these uh, hatcheries would do the job. And now that they know they're not doing the job, they're still responsible in the mitigation for changing and correcting those situations so that the fish can swim up to where they are hatched and swim out to the ocean. There are not very many states in the, in the United States that have the option to spawn salmon, to be a salmon state. You know, Ohio can't be a salmon state. These other states in the Midwest, they cannot be a salmon state. California is a natural salmon state. We have the biggest estuary on the, on the west coast. And it's a shame if we lose this to what? Watermelons in the desert? Um, if you know of anybody who can help us uh, get on the teams, get in these uh, meetings, get these connections for the testing, the right testing to be done, because traditional knowledge also has a place in this plan to return our fish. Thank you.